Okay, Mark Cron with Fighters Club Television, standing here with the one and only Kirik. You know, it's an honor and a privilege every time to speak with you. It's an honor and a privilege every time to uh, speak with you. Everybody gave me a lot of guff about uh, about doing this last year because I was a little bit hyper. So I'm going to try and be calm, Kirik, a little bit today. So, you know, for the new guys on, on the underground or, or mixedmartialarts.com, as it's called now, you know, there's been an onslaught of new guys coming on there. And I noticed that there's a, uh, a character or a personality type of a change to the form. Oh, Carrick's back to uh, microphoning again. I'm back to microphoning again. I'll be back in uh, two minutes. Okay, we're back here with Carrick. Again, the, the busiest man, well, maybe the second busiest, second busiest. Second busiest man at the Naga. So, I was addressing the, the new fans on, on MixedMartialArts.com. You know, in the old days, it was like pro fighters and really respectful guys with a few trolls. And now it seems like there's a whole bunch of new guys. Do you have any advice for them? Because I know there's some tension caused between the old school MMA.tv or SubmissionFighting.com guys and, and the new MixedMartialArts.com tough season, even newer than that. That's a, that, yeah, the TUF noobs, the tough noobs are, are, are definitely a big phenomenon in this entire sport. The first thing I want to say about tough noobs is God bless you guys because all you guys put your asses in seats and pay your money down. Fighters get more money, so that's great. It's probably a little less great when uh, you know, you've never heard of Helson Gracie, uh, which would be a sort of typical mistake that, that, that tough noobs would make. What we're trying to do with the site is, I have a five-year contract with the Association of Boxing Commissions as the official records keeper for mixed martial arts. So every regulated fight in America has to have uh, an ID number for every ID, uh, excuse me, for every fighter, every pro fighter, every regulated amateur fight, they have to give an ID. We actually issue those IDs. So by doing that, I'm trying to bring a lot of new pros and new amateur fighters onto the forum. But you're not going to stop the fact that when something's on television, it's on national TV, on CBS, you are going to get a lot of people who are very excited about it, they're very passionate about it, but they don't know anything. Um, and that is that is a little bit frustrating. But my, my great hope is we get all these new people coming in because fighting is on CBS, but we also, because I have this five-year contract, we get new amateur and pro fighters coming in. And I hope they all balance out and everybody's happy. So what we're looking for is some advice from the Commander-in-Chief as to how they should post, because I know there's been some tension you know, and maybe even you want to call it hate. I'm not even sure how to describe it anymore. It's, it's starting to get a little chaotic out there. But any any guidelines, that you, aside from, of course, the uh, agreement when you join on, but something more more practical, straight from you. Absolutely, that's a, that's a, that's a fantastic question. We, uh, for years and years and years, we try to police the site just through mods. We have about 350 members of the site that are mods. They, can free, they have different levels. They can freeze people, they can throw them off the site, they can do this and that. We recently instituted uh, a new thing where there's a vote up and vote down function. And if you think somebody's po the way somebody's posting is not in keeping with the terms of service, you just go vote down. And if like five or six other people all agree with you within a few hours, that guy gets frozen until I can look at him. And then I can look and I go, yeah, he's a complete idiot. Boop, and you show him the door. Or maybe you send him a nice letter saying, hey, just think before you post. So it's any blue namers on the forum. And by the way, everybody at this tournament has got a mud name. If you come up to me, you get a free blue name. Um, all blue namers on the, on the forum, start using that vote down function when you see somebody that's, that's pissing you off. And, uh, and hopefully it'll work out the best for all of us. So back to you. Now, we know you've gotten into the ring before. We see you grapple. What's, what's on the agenda? I know you're a, a year or two older than the last time we interviewed you. What, what's on your plate right now? I was, uh, actually this is one of those good news and bad news things. I was supposed to fight in early November in uh, Massachusetts. That bout fell through, then I was going to fight one of his students, and that bout fell through. So I didn't have the fight, and that makes you kind of sad. But the good side of it is, I get to party in Hawaii. And if I had had to just go back to my hotel room every night, do cardio, and fall asleep without partying for the next week, I might shoot myself. So it's a, I got a love-hate thing going on right there. I was supposed to fight in a couple of weeks. I'm not going to, but that means I can have an even better time in paradise. So now that you're becoming sort of a pseudo-local, coming here so much with the Naga, Tell us, when you get off the plane, is there any particular food that you're looking for or something that you're going straight to? That's a great question, yeah. Uh, the first place we usually head to is uh, Genki Sushi. I don't even know if that's like a super fancy sushi place around here. Oh, it's man. probably like the McDonald's of sushi for all I know. But for me, it's fantastic sushi. And I'm sitting on the airplane eating that airplane food going, Genki Sushi. Gen and then finally we get there, yeah, Genki Sushi. Now, had I th had that information beforehand, I would have at least steered you, maybe even taken you to a little bit of a better place. So we'll plan for that next year.
But um, tell us a little bit about the shave head. I read a little bit about it on uh, you know on the underground. Tell us a little bit about why why the new look. Um, Kip's daughter. Uh, uh, Amber has alopecia, which is a, a malady that makes your hair fall out. It kind of falls out in clumps, and so she just decided to, to shave it all off. This has been going on for maybe four weeks or so, and I was so impressed with how she never cried, she never complained, she did a little studying on Google on the internet. She gave her class a presentation about what alopecia is, what the symptoms are, how it's not catching. Um, she basically dealt with this problem like a little warrior. And, and, and I was so proud of her, I was like, all right, I'm going to shave my head too. So I brought my clippers, and yesterday, or maybe it was the day before, first she made me look like Travis Bickle in, uh, in uh, what was that movie from? I forget the name of the movie, but there was a character called Travis Bickle with a mohawk. She gave me a mohawk. She was going, ha, ha, ha. Then she shaved off the mohawk, and now I've got this. So uh, Amber and I are, well, I'm on Team Amber. She's a captain, and I'm the towel boy. I tell you what, we can't leave that, that head uncapped, so, you know, I can't say necessarily on behalf of Munster, but definitely, you know, to represent this cap well, you know, I, a little bit of a shill plug there for, for the beverage of choice of Fighters Club Television. Beverage of choice for Fighters Club Television. As a matter of fact, I am going to go have a Monster right now. Excellent. Thank you. Perfect, perfect.